Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. Today's tutorial is to create a quiz with Scratch and it's for computing and for children ages 9 to 12. To prepare for this lesson you'll need to make sure that the program Scratch is installed on your school network and that the children have a way to save and retrieve their work. So the lesson concepts today are that information which can change is called a variable and when information is transferred to the computer, it's called input. When information comes back to the user, it's called output. But the most important concept of this tutorial is the idea of selection. And in selection, a question is asked. And if the answer to that question is true, one course of action is taken. And if the answer is false, then a different course of action is taken. And so today we're going to ask a maths question. And if the answer is true, we're going to display the words correct on the screen. And if the answer is false, we're going to display the words wrong. OK, so this is the main starting screen for Scratch. The first thing that the children should be familiar to do is to delete the cat and choose their own sprite. OK, so I'm just going to choose the boy today. And they should also be familiar with how to do a background. And today we can be in the playground. All right, so once you have your background and sprite, we can start to do the scripts. And it starts when the flag is clicked. Then go to looks, say. Now we don't want to say hello. We want to say welcome to the quiz. And then we need to go to sensing because we're going to ask a question and this block here we need to go to ask not what is your name but we need to ask a maths question so what is seven times ten now the most important block is in here it's in control and this is a selection block that makes the program work if the answer is correct then display correct if the answer is not correct then display wrong so first of all, we need a block in the operators section here that says something equals something, which is this one. So I need to firstly put that inside and then go back to sensing and you can see that there is a block called answer. So if the answer, which in this case, 7 times 10 is 70, then go to looks and we need to use the say block. Then say correct. And of course, in the else, we need to say wrong. So let's have a look at how that works. When we click the green flag, he says, welcome to the quiz. What is 7 times 10? And I type the answer 70. And he says, correct. When I try it again, welcome to the quiz. What is 7 times 10? Let's put 60. And he says, wrong. And so to continue this process, you just go back to sensing, go to ask, and then start the new question. The medium level activities that the children might like to try are that the children might like to add some sounds or add some movement. And to do that, you need to go to sounds, import a sound, and once you import a sound, you can go to the sounds menu and then play the sound until done and you can decide if the sound plays if the answer is correct or if a different sound plays when the answer is incorrect another option is to go to motion and you can decide where using these x coordinates the sprite is at the start of the program and the x coordinates are down here and the y coordinates as well are down here and so you need to say where it goes to the start and then you can use this block glide uh, to different coordinates throughout the program as well. So the children should be familiar with the sound and glide blocks already. So I'm going to go to the next activity, which is to broadcast a message and then a different sprite will appear when the answer is correct or incorrect. So firstly, we're going to use the block that says broadcast and that is in events so when I get the answer 70 correct I'm going to broadcast a message and a new message 
that says correct. And then I'm going to also broadcast the same correct message when the second question I asked down here is correct. Now why I've done the broadcast is that that gives other sprites a message to listen to. So let's make the sprite and I'm just going to use a tick for correct. That's called button 4. Alright, so I'm going to hold down the mouse and drag it at the top and then for this sprite it needs the code when I received correct then looks show but we need to also do some blocks that say to hide at the start of the program and that is when the green flag is clicked looks hide now I don't want this sprite to show all of the time so I need to also do a block that says wait and wait a bit longer than one second maybe three seconds and then looks hide. Now let's see what this code looks like when we run the program. So I go to full screen at the top left, click on the green flag. Welcome to the quiz. 7 times 10 is 70. And you see this sprite which is hidden at the start of the program will appear for three seconds. Second question, correct. And so you can add a different sprite for incorrect and then say to show this sprite when the answer is incorrect. The children will quickly realize a limitation of this program and that is that it asks very few questions. So now I'd like to show you how to get the program to generate its own random numbers. And this is done by variables. It looks quite different and will be quite challenging. So. I'm going to put this code over here just for comparison and then delete it at the end. Okay, so when the flag is clicked, we can say the same message. Okay, notice I used the duplicate block there. We can say welcome to the quiz, that's fine. And then we're going to go down to data and make a variable. And this variable will just be called A, just number A. Now at the start we don't want this variable showing on the screen so we're going to hide that variable and that will be the first number. Then we're going to make a variable and this number will be called variable B and also we're going to hide this. Now we're going to do a control and say to ask four questions in this program. So we're going to repeat four times. Now, every other block will go inside this repeat loop. So first I'm going to go to data and set A to a random number. So to do that, I need to go to operators and this use this block here, pick random. 1 to 10 will be okay for this. And I'm also going to do the same with B, number B. So I'm going to set B to operator, pick random, 1 to 10. Now I have to ask my question. Now it's chosen two random numbers, ask the question. So go to ask, instead of what is your name, what is... Now, how are we going to get the numbers that we've just randomly generated from these two variables to go in to the question and that is done and also in the operators menu by using the join command down here now we need a few of these ask what is so we're going to need a few of these so ask what is space and then we go to data a then we need another join block and I think one more. Uh, now this is where you put the plus space data B. So what is A plus B? And the last one I put here is for the question mark. So what is A plus B? Just move this over so you can see it and wait. Now we do the selection block. So go to control if something then else. So if, once again in sensing, 
the answer equals, oops, I forgot the operator's block down here in the green menu. If the answer equals, now we need to go to plus. This is for plus, of course. So if the answer does, in fact, equal A plus the number B, oh, what happened to plus? Whoops. A plus B, put that in there. Then go to looks, say, correct. And of course, if the answer does not equal A plus B, then say, wrong. And then we can delete this code because that will confuse the computer. And then let's see how this works. Go to full screen, click on the flag. Welcome to the quiz. What is 3 plus 9? And let's see if we can get this wrong to see what happens. Wrong. What is 8 plus 6? Again, let's see if we can get this wrong. What is 7 plus 7? Let's get this one right. 14, and there should be one more question. What is 8 plus 1? 9? Correct. And so the program is now selecting a random number and using the selection block here to decide if the answer is correct or not. A final challenge activity is to get the program to display a score as the user gets questions right or wrong. So to do that, we have to make another variable and that's going to be called score. And at the start of the game, where no questions have been answered, the score needs to be set to zero. And then, if the answer A plus B is correct, we need to change the score by one. Now, you don't need a block to say change the score by zero when the question's wrong, because the computer will, will know that. And so, uh, the other thing you can do to display this, the score is to go to the looks block over here and go to say. Now once again we need to use the join block and when that's in the operators. So go to operators, join, because we need to join your score is now space, then go to data variables score. I also need to make sure that this same block when the answer is incorrect is also displayed in the when the answer is correct. So I'm going to right click on this block, go to duplicate and put exactly the same block into there. Now let's see what the program looks like when it's put all together. Go to the top left button to go to full screen and then start the program. Your score is now zero, so the incorrect one works. Five plus four is nine, of course, correct. And now the score is one. And the message says the score is now one. Four plus two is six, correct. And the score is now two. Five plus nine is 14, and that's correct. And that's the end of the program. To request a tutorial or to download a copy of the slides used in this tutorial, visit letslearncomputing.com. Thanks for listening.